During the Second World War, not yet a year after war was declared, Britain found itself on the brink of defeat. But with courageous actions by many, planning and luck, there was still a way out. Better known as the Dunkirk evacuation, or the miracle of Dunkirk, this is the story of how 850 private civilian boats helped to rescue 336,000 British and French soldiers who were trapped on the beaches of Dunkirk. But how did they get into this situation? May 20th of 1940, after six weeks of fighting on French soil, Allied troops were cut off and trapped by German pincer movements. They were forced into the town of Dunkirk on the coast of France. The Allied forces set up a defensive perimeter and held out for four days against German advancements and awaited a seaborne evacuation. Not only were the majority of the British forces trapped, but Britain itself was left vulnerable to invasion from Germans who were literally on their doorstep. Winston Churchill described the situation as a colossal military disaster, and it may have cost Britain the war. Hitler had the Allied forces trapped on the ground by his panzer units, but on May 23rd he ordered them to halt attacks. There are many theories as to why he made this choice, and some believe that he expected that the Luftwaffe, or the Nazi Germany Air Force, would finish the job and defeat the trapped army, called the Battle of Dunkirk. But this was not successful, and is perhaps Hitler's biggest mistake during the war. On May 26, he ordered a resumed land attack, but this three-day pause allowed Allied forces to prepare and to plan. So came alive Operation Dynamo. All hope for survival was riding on this evacuation plan. The army had transport ships and ferries at the ready, but due to the shallow waters near Dunkirk Beach, British destroyer ships could not approach the beaches directly. So to get onto the awaiting ships, soldiers were having to wade out to the boats instead. Consider they were also under threat of enemy fire at the time. Operation Dynamo, led by Admiral Sir Bertram Ramsey, had the goal of collecting as many small crafts as they could. On May 27th, the call was put out all across the southern and eastern coast of England. The Admiralty had made an order requesting all owners of self-propelled pleasure craft between 30 feet and 100 feet in length to send all particulars to the Admiralty within 14 days from today, if they had not already been offered or requisitioned. Some were taken with owner's permission and some were requisitioned by the government. Vessels were double-checked to be seaworthy, fuelled and ready. They were taken to Ramsgate in England. They were manned by naval officers and experienced volunteers. Some but very few owners also insisted that they sailed themselves. Some vessels and civilians responded unofficially and did their part to help with the clear crisis. Numbers, therefore, as usual, aren't 100% accurate, but around 850 little boats, or little ships as they were called, sailed from Ramsgate, England, to Dunkirk, France, between May 26 and June 4th of 1940. Many of the small craft made for shallow waters in the canals and rivers had never been to sea before. And this wasn't just any seaborne journey. They were charting extremely dangerous waters during the war. Between the eight days of evacuation, they suffered heavy air attacks by the German Luftwaffe within daylight hours, and for the last three days they were ordered to stop evacuation attempts during the daytime because the constant bombing was so intense. Close to the shore, they were also in range of German artillery, and the threat of German U-boats were also ever-present. In the darkness, unlit and able to respond to naval signals, many of these little ships were virtually on their own, vulnerable to both enemy and friendly fire. Overall, as I said, there are several inaccurate numbers, but here are the final tallies from the Admiralty. And in total, about six Royal Navy destroyers were sunk and a number of other transport ferries, and 250 little ships were lost or destroyed. Now the story that the little ships carried out this miracle themselves is not entirely true. There were docks at Dunkirk that were accessible to the larger naval ships, and on May 26th and 27th, almost two-thirds of those rescued in the evacuations were done so by these ships and ferries, not the little ships. 
but the little ships did play an essential role against time. During the mission, some boats became shuttles between the beach and the destroyers, ferrying soldiers to safety. Others would carry soldiers all the way back to Britain themselves. On May 27th, those docks were destroyed by a successful bombing raid by the Luftwaffe and made the huge transport ships essentially useless. It became vital that men be rescued directly from the beach, and at this time they were under direct threat from the encroaching enemy army. And without the help of the little ships to ferry the men from the beaches, many men would have been stranded. It wasn't until the 3rd of June that the last of the British army were evacuated. German forces were just two miles from Dunkirk and the Operation Dynamo was deemed a success. On the 4th of June, the Germans had hoisted their flank over the docks of Dunkirk. But this was an overwhelming redemption on the part of the Allied forces. They had saved their men and the chances of ever winning the war. Winston Churchill, who had only been Prime Minister for less than a month at this point, gave his famous speech, We shall fight them on the beaches. He praised the rescue mission as a miracle of deliverance. Many coastal ports and harbours along the southern coast were used to deposit the rescued troops. Ramsgate being the main hub, almost 43,000 landing there, and Margate reportedly received 38,000. But such is war, and even after this harrowing experience, they were shuttled around and transported straight back to the war front. The Dunkirk evacuation saved many men, but it could not save France, and tragically many of the rescued troops would soon lose their lives in the following Battle of France. A decisive German victory led to an armistice, establishing occupation zones in France during the majority of World War II. There is actually a Dunkirk Jack, and if you remember from my previous video on the Union Jack, Jack means a flag specifically flown on ships. And this one is the St George's Cross with the arms of Dunkirk in the centre. This flag represents the association of Dunkirk little ships. The term little ships applies to all craft originally privately owned, and is used to widely describe the amazing feat of these small civilian crafts used to help rescue 336,000 Allied soldiers. The association has a list of all known boats proven to have taken part in the mission, and they are allowed to display a Dunkirk 1940 plaque and to fly the Dunkirk Jack. According to the association, many of these vessels are still in private hands, and some have found their way to the museums. This started as a true military disaster, which necessitated a rescue operation and turned into a story of heroism. The mission had more than just one effect, as it did raise morale for the British public. In fact, there is still the term Dunkirk spirit to describe courage and solidarity in face of adversity. It did act as a way to bring everyone into the war effort. As much as rationing, factory work and help on the home front, this was just another chance for civilians to provide more direct support. It was the miracle of Dunkirk. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more and goodbye for now.